Hi everyone, I'm Catherine. Today I'd like to discuss why I chose the Dremel laser cutter over a few other options I was considering. Uh, the other options include the Glowforge, uh, the Epilogue Zing, and the less expensive Chinese laser cutters that you can get on eBay or Amazon for like $400. So to start with, let's talk about why I chose the Dremel. The, the pros of the Dremel is that it's leveraging an existing laser cutter that has a couple generations, so it's not a brand new machine. This is something that's been around for a while and has been through a lot of rigorous testing. Another good aspect of the Dremel is that they invested a lot of time and money into the safety features and getting it licensed, uh, so that's really reassuring for this machine. Especially since I have a young daughter, I want a machine in the house that is very safe and not potentially hazardous. Another aspect that I really appreciate is the support. They have direct phone line to the support uh, system and it's real people you get to talk to and they're super nice and they were really helpful in, help in getting my laser cutter up and running. One specific example is my laser tube was broken when it arrived and when they sent me the new laser tube, since it was one of the first ones that they had to replace, they actually had me FaceTime with one of their engineers so he could walk me through how to replace it. And that was really reassuring to me, so I know that I'm uh, putting the new laser tube in properly and I don't break more of my laser cutter. And it was also really awesome that they were willing to spend the extra time with me to make sure that the laser cutter was up and running. Uh, the last main pro that I really appreciate about the Dremel is that it has a couple of different ventilation options. So right now I'm direct venting my laser cutter out uh, through the window, but if I grow and start doing more laser cutting, I can get the additional ventilation that I need uh, to support that. It's also just generally a really beautiful piece of equipment. This is something that uh, once it moves to its permanent spot in my shop is gonna be a center point and something that I really love looking at and using. Uh, so I really appreciate the attention to detail and the design of this as well. So there are a few trade-offs with the Dremel machine, and I want to make sure that I'm completely honest about how I was um, weighing those trade-offs between the different machines. Uh, the first one is that uh, the price is somewhat high for um, a quote-unquote hobby level machine. This works a little bit better than a hobby level machine, uh, but it was $6,000, and that's not super attainable for some people. Uh, that being said, for this quality of a, of a machine, that's actually a very reasonable price, especially compared to some of the other laser cutters that I was uh, considering that cost upward of $15,000. Uh, this is a great starter laser cutter uh, for the price point. One minor issue is the bed size. It is only a 12 by 20 inch bed, which I wasn't sure if that was going to be large enough for some of the projects, but so far I've been doing a little bit more smaller scale projects and so the bedside has not been an issue. Uh, later, if I want to do larger laser cutting, I might need to upgrade to a larger laser cutter that would also cost more. Another aspect of this level of laser cutter is that it is a glass tube. Uh, other laser cutters have different types of tubes that are not as easily damaged or broken. And as you've seen, and I just mentioned, I did have a broken tube, but Dremel helped me fix it, and they also sell uh, new tubes at a very reasonable cost. So that's not too, too big of a deal either, but I just want to mention it here. When you're comparing laser cutters, you want to check what tube type it has. One other aspect with this level of laser cutter is the speed is a little bit slower. So if you're trying to do high level, like production level laser cutting, this is not going to be the laser cutter that you want to get. You're going to want to look into Epilog or Universals, and I'll talk about Epilog in just a minute. Uh, the other aspect is that since this is a newer device, it doesn't have as large of a community online yet to uh, help troubleshoot and to give tips and advice. And that's kind of part of the reason why I'm doing these YouTube videos, to help you all out, because this is a newer device, and since I've got it, we might as well start building that community right now. The other laser cutters I was considering when I was looking at the Dremel, specifically same level laser cutter, about the same price, a little bit less expensive, is the Glowforge. So Glowforge is also a beautifully designed machine. It has about the same bed size. It has the same uh, style laser tube and wattage. And I was very tempted by Glowforge. Uh, the main reason 
that I didn't go with Glowforge is that I couldn't get it immediately. Uh, my office actually has had a Glowforge on pre-order for the past two years, and I think it'll be delivered soon, I'm not quite sure, uh, but I didn't want to have to wait for it to be delivered. I wanted to start laser cutting now. Uh, the pros about the Glowforge is that they've done a really good job building a community as well as the laser cutter. So if you go on Glowforge's website, there's a lot of um, community posts sharing laser cutting files and troubleshooting, and that's a really nice aspect. If you have a Dremel laser cutter, you can still go on those communities and uh, borrow some of the files and everything. So that's what's nice about the laser cutting community in general is that you can share files. The one other thing that, that bothered me a little bit about Glowforge is um, although it is very approachable and user-friendly and intuitive, they actually call laser cutting laser printing. And that just sounded a little weird to me. As a professional who works with laser cutters and engravers, I want it to be treated as that professional level. So uh, although Glowforge is very similar to Dremel, there, there were a couple reasons why I chose this over the Glowforge. That being said, uh, I'm looking forward to trying out the Glowforge. And once I do, I would love to do a video kind of comparing these two models and letting you know how they work uh, side by side and the real pros and cons of both of them. So I'm totally open to playing with the Glowforge and hopefully I'll get a chance to pretty soon. Another laser cutter that I was heavily considering is the Epilogue Zing. Epilogue and Universal are kind of the pro level brands for laser cutters. And those are the two that I have worked with the most. I have a background in architecture and, um, and art, so I've worked with those to build architectural models and to do uh, large quantities of pop-up cards, and so I've been laser cutting all sorts of materials with those laser cutters. So I'm very familiar and comfortable with them, and I was really hoping to, to get an epilogue. Uh, the downside of epilogue is that they're a little bit more expensive because they're on that pro level. Uh, they they work a little bit faster, they have a higher wattage for the laser tube, and they are very uh, robust and rugged. I'm hoping that if I do create some uh, products with my laser cutter that I need to do higher volumes, I would probably get the epilogues in next in order to supplement my laser cutter. The one other aspect I really love about Epilogue and Universal is how you interface with the laser cutter. For those two laser cutters, you actually have a print driver. So from Illustrator, or Corel, or whatever software you're designing in, you just send to the printer and set all of your laser cutting and engraving settings in the print dialog box, and that makes it super easy and streamlined. Uh, for Dremel and Glowforge, they have their own proprietary software that you have to load your files into. So it's just one extra step and it also leads a little bit of headaches if your files aren't lining up properly. And that's why I have a couple of videos talking about Dremel software and how to use it and how to set up your files so that you can uh, more easily uh, use Dremel software. The final laser cutter that I wasn't really heavily considering, but a lot of people have asked me about or have mentioned in the comments, are the inexpensive laser cutters from China that you can get on eBay and Amazon. It's about four or five hundred dollars to get a similar level laser cutter, uh, including shipping. And there's some major cons to going in that way. The laser cutters are a little bit less intuitive. They don't necessarily have the same safety standards as a more professional machine does. And if you have the time to, to figure out how to use it and to really set up your ventilation properly, then it might be a good fit for you. But for me, it wasn't because my, my time is worth a little bit more than what it would take to get it up and running and to use on a regular basis. I need a laser cutter that's really reliable, that I know as soon as I send a file over to, it, it's going to run and run properly, and that it has software and support behind it. So with, the, with those Chinese uh, laser cutters, you're not getting the same kind of support that you can get if you have a, a slightly higher level machine. So if you, if you want to try a laser cutter out and you feel very comfortable with it, then go ahead and try one of the, the less expensive laser cutters. But if you're looking for something that you can make real products with and have a reliable support system for, then the Dremel or the Glowforge is going to be a good laser cutter to start with. So thank you for all your questions, asking about the Dremel specifically. I hope this has helped you understand a little bit more the reasoning why I chose the Dremel 
and give you a little bit more information behind a couple other laser cutters to help you make a decision if you are looking to buy a laser cutter. If you have additional questions, please leave them in the comments and make sure to subscribe so that I can keep doing these awesome videos for you. Thanks!